morning, stampers and crafters. Welcome to Technique Tuesday. I believe we are on episode 30 now. Today's going to be a really quick technique of a uh, another fun background. You know, I like doing backgrounds. You're going to have a plastering this one. It's actually, I don't know, I guess I'd just call it bubble blowing background. But you use dish soap water and ink and a straw and it is so fun and it comes out with these really unique designs which i will share several with you today um we'll jump right in and do it and then i'll show you some samples and down in the uh, description of this video for each sample i will photo it and i will also include all the supplies that were used to make it we are, as you see, I've got a few already set up here, but I'm going to show you how to um, get set up. What I used is just some old uh, styrofoam cups, and um, if you have a disposable, uh, you know, bowl or tray or something you want to use, you could probably use that too. These are easy. I'll be able to throw them away. They're lightweight. But what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to trim them down a little because we are not going to be filling these cups. So all I did was take and just, um, okay, easier said than done. Here we go. And I'm just going to trim these off a little bit and just make smaller containers. And I'm going to add two more colors to my little collage here. So let's get two cups ready. And then what you'll need is either some bubbles that, you know, the little bubbles that we played with when we were kids, uh, the little bottles of bubbles. And it has a little uh, wand in it. You blow on it and you chase your bubbles around the yard. They actually still make this. I went to um, Walmart and found this big bottle it's, I don't know how many ounces, it's 16 ounces, and it cost me $1. And I thought, well, that's easier than even doing it the manual way. But you can do it either way. So if you have some of these bubbles, you can use those. You can also get these at the dollar store. I'll bet you they're at the dollar store. But anyway, you can either use this or take your little container and do about three parts dish soap to about one part water. Now, that recipe I found is going to vary depending on what kind of dish soap you have. Um, my three to one was I used Dawn dish soap and it's, you know, thicker and it bubbles well and that sort of thing. So that little, you can play with that and see which works best for you. But I would do three parts of the dish soap to one part water. But since I just have the bottle, I'm just going to pour a little bit in here. Maybe a quarter inch or so. Doesn't take a lot. And then I'm going to take... I've already got some colors. Here I've got um, Garden Green. And I believe this one is Pacific Point. And I've got some crushed curry here. And I've got some metallic gold. This one is, you're going to really love and want to do this one. And all you're going to do is take your reinkers, and your metallic gold also has a reinker. This metallic gold is a little bit thicker than normal reinkers. So you probably only need maybe three drops depending on how much fluid you use. I think I used three in here and this is probably, and I've been using it all morning, so this is maybe a quarter inch and about three drops. So you're going to take your reinker, and you're just going to add, depending on how intense you want it, for a quarter inch I've been adding about five drops. So that's my Melon Mambo, and I wanted to do some purple. 
So I have some gorgeous grape here. I'm going to do gorgeous grape in this one. Tap off the drip there. And then what you'll need is you'll need a regular straw. You can use one or two, but if you just keep a, uh, a um, paper towel with you, you can wipe it off as you use it. You will also need some watercolor paper. Now, I did try this on regular paper, but because of the water that's in the soap, it, it, it saturates your paper a little too much. So I would just go ahead and use watercolor paper. So I've got some watercolor paper, and I've got my inks ready. I just have to stir them up. Let's see, what else do you need? you got your watercolor paper, your soap, your straw. You need a little, uh, little rag, and I think we're ready to go. So let's stir these up. So I just take the end of my straw, and I'm just going to stir up that color real good. And since the soap is thick... You know, it's got, you kind of have to, it'll, your ink will sink to the bottom. So just kind of scrape the bottom and move it around. And then I'm just going to wipe this off. And stir up my grape. Oh, that grape's going to be pretty. As you see, it's the, you know, just a few drops saturates it pretty well. Now, when you're picking your colors, what I did notice is that your colors are going to be a lot more muted than they normally are. So, like, your Melon Mambo is not going to be super strong. So, I'm hoping this turns out pretty well. Because I had done a card, and I'll show it to you in a few minutes here, with Rococo Rose, and it looks really dark here, but when you see the image, it's not. So let's go ahead and let me show you how fun this is. So you have your straw, you have your ink, and I'm just going to take, um, what I did is I took a four uh, by five and a quarter, and you can do anything with what you create. You can either use the whole piece, you can do die cuts, um, but just start out with a piece that you can play with. You'll really enjoy it. So now we're going to take our straw and um, trust me, you'll only put the part you stirred in your mouth once. Yep, I did it. I did. And thankfully I'm not on camera because now I have a blue lip. I think I did it with my uh, specific point too. And I didn't even notice it. My husband noticed it when I came out of the she cave. Asking me why my lips were blue. Okay. All right. Let's get started. So now you're going to take your straw and you're just going to blow. Now you want to do it fairly lightly. You don't want to, you know, blow it over the top. And you want your bubbles to come above. Let's see if I can tilt that. You want it to come above your container. Okay. Set your... Make sure you use something to cover your uh, workspace because it can splatter. So now you're just going to take your watercolor paper and just tap it on top of those bubbles. And see what it does? It adds this really cool little bubble design. So now I'm just going to raise some more bubbles there. And right there is where you'll be able to determine whether or not you need more dish soap. Okay, if it's too hard to get it to bubble, add just a touch more dish soap till you get it to the consistency you want. Let's do one more pink. I really like the way that Melon Mambo is showing up. And look at how cool that is. And now you have a little bubble, just let it, if you let it, the longer you let that little bubble set, the more of a ring it'll make. And you can just tap it if you want to, but it'll pop. So let's add some more colors to that. Let me set the Melon Mambo aside. I want to try this gorgeous grape and see how that turns out. Now you can do all one solid color. You can do a mix of colors. As most techniques, this is one of those that the possibilities are endless. So let's get some grape on here. 
Okay. And we're just going to tap it on our paper there. Oh, isn't that pretty? Look at that. How fun is that? Wow. Okay, I'm going to I want to kind of fill this paper a little. So I'm going to bring back my pink, but I'm going to do a couple more grape. And I usually wipe off my straw from the last color, just so it doesn't contaminate your other one. Now this does get your watercolor paper a little bit wet, you know, the water in there. So we'll set it aside. Let me get this little spot I missed right here. Look at that. How fun is that? And I'm just going to pop that little bubble. And look at that neat design it leaves. Now, the, the Feast de Resistance is I'm going to add a little bit of gold glimmer to this. And it is so pretty. It adds a, it's kind of like a little veining it'll do. I'm almost out of bubbles in my gold. I've been playing with the gold. Yeah, I need to add some bubbles. I can't even get it to come up. Come above my cup there. So I'm going to add just a little bit. Let's stir it up. It's got kind of a... Uh, not really water consistency, just a tad thicker. And I have it quite above my cup there. Let's add a couple more of those. And then I'll raise it to the camera so you can see how this gold really adds some neat. Got a couple bubbles there that are popped. So all I'm going to do is just touch it with my straw. Pop those bubbles. But look at that. I don't know if the light's picking up the shimmer of the gold in there. But look at that pretty background. Isn't that neat? Okay. So let's move on to another one. And I'm going to set that aside to dry. Now this one, we're going to be trying this together. I took the dye from Nature's Thoughts. I took this beautiful um, edged kind of stitch dotted frame and I cut it out and then I white embossed this beautiful leafy image right here. So I'm going to see how well it resists. So let's go here. Let's see what color. Let's go with our greens on this one and see how it turns out. Oh, I'm going to stir it up a little. So hopefully this will work as an emboss resist. I think it will.
This is a super fun um, technique you can do with your children. Um, I think they'd get a big kick out of it. I have a couple of team members that their their kids love to craft with them. And I think they'd have a really good time doing this. Wow, that really came out neat. I'm just picking up some bubbles out of there. I'm going to do one more. Right here at the bottom. Oh, looky there. Now, I bet when this dries, I should be able to just buff it with a um, Kleenex. And it'll emboss resist. Let me pop my bubbles here. Oh, how pretty is that? Now that one is actually garden green. So you see how much lighter it is? It's going to come out lighter on the watercolor paper. So I'm going to hit this one with the heat tool a little bit. I'm going to see if it emboss resists all right. I like to heat from the back to flatten your paper back out when it's wet. You kind of use your uh, heat tool as an iron. I do have a small mini iron I keep in my craft space for when I'm doing water coloring. You know how your paper kind of gets a little warped. Okay, now I'm just going to take a Kleenex and see if that wipes off. There you go. There's your emboss resist. How pretty is the oh how pretty is that? And now just for grins, let's bring in our temperatus. Let's grab a greeting. How about just a note? This is from Music from the Heart. And I just love this little saying, just a note, because a lot of times you're just if you're like me, I send cards to people all the time just because. You know, there's nothing better than getting a little bit of happy mail. Something other than a bill in the mail. So I'm just going to take this. Line it up. And I think I'll just stamp that in regular Memento Black. And then I'll show you all my other samples. Of, I've been playing with this all day today and I'm just having a blast. Now it's watercolor paper, so you have to usually stamp at least once or twice, sometimes three times because of the coarseness of the watercolor paper. So now we can take that and show you how simple it is to just make a quick little fun card. Let's grab a Whisper White card base and let's let's just pop it up on there and see how it looks. I probably should have made sure this space was uh, clean before I laid my my uh, white card base on there. Do as I say, not as I do. Now you're gonna, since it's watercolor paper, I like to make sure I have plenty of dimensionals to hold it down flat. And then I'm simply going to take this 
Concentrate on our card. Plain and simple, but very clean and neat. It's kind of hard to show the different textures and colors on film. But it, it really is pretty in person. I'll make sure I photo everything. So now let's see. Let's bring in these samples. These are ones I've been making. Now this one I did in pinks with some grays. Let me see if I can light up our situation here a little. This one was done in light pinks and grays with some gold highlights in there. Isn't he adorable? And I'll put all the supplies in the stamp set that has this adorable little mouse in there for you. This one, all I did was Pacific Point. It has all these beautiful bubbles. Thought it was perfect for the mermaid. And then I used my stitch rectangle dies, made a frame, added a couple tiny embellishments. Done. Now this one, I die cut out of my... Like this one would look really good, the one we just did. Just do some different die cuts out of it. Now see as that's drying, I see the gold in there. This one I just used some blues and a little bit of gold. I guess I'm kind of hooked on the gold. Die cut them with the stitch shapes. Added a flourish and done. This one I used some greens and some yellows. And then just added some really faint white die cuts from the uh, Nature's Thoughts dies here. And just put a little sentiment on some vellum. And look at that nice, calm, little, subtle background with some gold accents in there. Little gold, um, what do they call that? That's our... our uh, Oh, what do they call it? Help me out here. The mini sequins um, thread. Just add a little bit there to highlight some of the gold in the card. And that's it. That's our technique today. Bubbles, ink, a straw, and watercolor paper. And your possibilities are endless. Be sure to share your projects with me, and I hope you enjoyed today's technique. Have a happy stampin' day. Bye-bye.